This is example 1B on page 285. This is in lesson 6.3. Uh, the question wants us to use factoring to graph this quadratic relation. So exactly what we have done in the last one. So in order to factor this, I find the factors of the first two terms and the factor of the last term, C. So 1 and 6, 2 and 3. We know that their products are going to have to add to what our middle number is, which is negative 1. I don't want to put that line there just because I don't want to screw it up. Okay. Looking at this, I can tell with some quick mental math, we're going to be using these two. And I'm going to be multiplying the 2 times 2 and 1 times 3. That will give us 4 and 3. Okay? And I need the 4 to be negative in order for this to be negative 1. So that means this 2 is going to have to be negative. So when I go to set this up, y equals, we have 1x in one bracket, 2x in the other. And remember, these numbers need to go into the opposite bracket of what I multiplied them by. So it was 1 multiplied by 3. So this positive 3 goes in the opposite bracket of my 1x, which means when I multiplied my 2 times negative 2, the negative 2 goes into the opposite bracket of the 2x. So this is now factored properly. And I need to find the x-intercept. So in order to find the x-intercepts, what is y equal to when we're on the x-intercepts, Duke? Zero. zero. So I'm going to set y equal to zero. Just like we did on the last question we done where we had the equal. So we've set our y equal to zero. And I have these two brackets. And I'm just going to go over the logic one more time. We know that these brackets are multiplied by each other. So one of them is going to have to equal 0 in order to make the other side of the equation equal 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for two answers. I'm going to split them up. x minus 2 equals 0, and 2x plus 3 equals 0. So I've split this. I'm going for two answers now. Right here, it's easy to see x is positive 2. And if you look, you pretty much could have just flipped that sign in there to figure out what x is equal to. That doesn't hold true to the one on the right. I'm going to solve for this x. 2x equals negative 3. When I bring the 3 over, divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 3 over 2. A little different from the bracket to the left. So my 2x intercepts are positive 2 and negative 3 over 2. So I have my 2x intercepts. I'll write that out here. x intercepts are positive 2, negative 3 over 2. Nice. I'm going to quickly graph them. So I'm going to put a graph up. You guys make one right now. All right. So I have my two x-intercepts. I'm going to quickly plot them. Positive 2, negative 3 over 2 as a number is, anyone know? Negative 1.5. So 1.5 is about there. So I have my two x-intercepts. Once again, I need to find my axis of symmetry. So we have that little formula, r plus s over 2, is going to give us our axis of symmetry. And we can just call it this one r and this one s if we like. So I'm going to add negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5, which would be a little easier for this, plus positive 2 over 2. This is going to give me 0.5 divided by 2 which gives me 0.25, a quarter, coming from a half to a quarter, OK? So my axis of symmetry, this was a little harder to graph, is at 0.25. Oh, that's not going to be nice. 0.25 is going to be there. Come on, that was good. Look at that. Woo! All right. Okay, so we have our, our axis of symmetry, and we know that our axis of symmetry is also the x-coordinate of the vertex. So I'm going to just write that down here. 
our vertex. The x coordinate is 0.25. And I need to find my y coordinate. So in order to do that, I can take either, scroll right back up to the, I can take my standard form. Here's our standard form. Okay. Or I can take my factored form. Anyone remember what the other form we learned was? Vertex form. That's right. We have three forms. So I can take my factor or my standard. We'll do both just to prove to you that it does not matter. So we have y is equal to 2x squared minus x. What was it? Minus 6. And our factored form was y is equal to x minus 2. 2x minus 3, plus, plus 3, I think, plus 3. Okay, so we have our standard and our factor form. I'm going to substitute my x value and for the x's in the standard form, and I'm also going to do it in the factor form just to prove that we're going to get the exact same y coordinate. So let's do a little bed math here. y equals actually, okay. So uh, I'm just going to solve standard form first, and I'm going to have the calculator on the side just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you can easily punch it in the calculator itself. Y is equal to 0.25 squared minus 0.25 minus 6. According to bed math, we're going to deal with the exponents first. So I need to find 0.25 squared equals, whoa. Does that say cubed? That might say cubed. Sorry. Can't see from here. Oh, that is right. Okay. Three. Can someone verify that number? Let's make sure it's right. Yeah, it is, eh? Oh, it rounded. Hold on. All right. So I knew that was not right. It did not make any sense. Let's uh, just erase this number here. Point zero six two five is the actual number. I know it looks a little awkward on the calculator, but we got it. Okay. Uh, that number times two, so multiplied by two, equals point one two five. So we have y equals point one two five minus 0.25, and just keep these in brackets just so we can have them separate, and minus 6. I'm going to do that all in one line on the calculator, okay? So that is 0.125, subtract 0.25, subtract 6, is equal to negative 6.125. That's nice. Y equals negative 6.125. Okay, so... According to this, that is our y-intercept. I'm just going to scroll over to the factor form and try it over there also. y equals, we substitute our 0.25 in, just to prove this. 2 times 0.25 plus 3. Now I've got a lot of brackets there. Um, 0.25 subtract 2 equals negative 0.175. Negative 1.75. And in our other bracket, we have 2 times 0.25 plus 3. Is that right? Yeah. 3.5. Finally, we're going to multiply those two times negative 1.75. Hey, exact same number. What a surprise. There we go. Okay, so we can hide that calculator for now. So we take a look at our answers. We have the exact same y coordinates, which means our vertex is at negative 6.125. And I do my best to graph it with the graph we have. Negative 6.125 is somewhere here. Somewhere there. I don't know. Wait, wait, assume I'm close. All right, and let's try, well, let's use the one with the arrow. 
There we go. A parabola fits nicely. So we've now factored everything and drawn our parabola even with a more difficultly factored question. Catch it. Okay, so your homework this weekend, you, you don't technically need your textbook for tonight's homework, but you'll need it for makeup question. Go to Blue Notebook, page 351, and you do 351 to 354. There's about know, eight, maybe eight questions. You're to answer them the way they want them answered. So they're telling you to answer by factoring. I would also like you to graph them. Graph them. Graph. Ready? I'm going to make you zoom in. Graph. Make sure you graph them. Oh. Shoot, I don't know how to get rid of that now. Okay. What? 351. That's okay. 